This is the second lecture for group one. For this lecture, we're going to be talking about cachexia with patients that have head and neck cancer and what nutritional interventions are appropriate. In this lecture, we're going to cover the prevalence of cachexia along with some proposed physiological changes that contribute to it, the stages of cachexia, and appropriate nutritional interventions. Current data shows that over half of cancer patients will develop cachexia at some point during treatment, with 80% of patients that have advanced staged cancer being likely to develop cachexia. A third of deaths in this population is thought to be directly related to cachexia, and it's shown that death occurs when there's 30% more or more weight loss from their usual pre-cancer body weight. This slide is a brief list of some of the factors affecting intake, which can lead to the muscle wasting, which is the primary characteristic of cachexia. Most of these side effects are caused from the chemotherapy and radiation treatment. It is important to assess each patient and ask them if they're experiencing all of these different side effects to determine if they're able to get the intake they need to prevent cachexia from occurring. Current research does not show a clearly identified cause for cancer cachexia. There have been some thoughts that it is related to tumor host interaction, which causes the muscle to be broken down as the primary source of full fuel versus fat. Um, it is also thought that there's an imbalance of pro-inflammatory cytokines that leads to these metabolic abnormalities. The medical community has defined cachexia as a complex metabolic syndrome associated with underlying illness and characterized by loss of muscle with or without loss of fat mass that cannot be fully reversed by conventional nutrition support and leads to progressive functional impairment. And even though it does say that it cannot be fully reversed by conventional nutrition support, it is important to note that even though it cannot be fully reversed, it is something that we can treat and prevent it from getting further and leading to this progressive functional impairment. This chart shows the progression of cachexia. When there's some weight loss, it's thought to be mild cachexia. Once they get below their ideal body weight, it is then categorized as moderate cachexia. When muscle wasting becomes obvious, and they have been below their ideal body weight and lost a significant amount of weight, it is then classified as severe cachexia. If this progresses any further, it will lead to death. Early nutritional intervention is key to preventing or stopping the progression of cachexia in pa with patients that have cancer. It is especially important if the patient has head and neck cancer because there is such a decreased intake due to the, the different pain and side effects associated with treatment. Prophylactic peg placement has been shown to significantly decrease the prevalence of cachexia by already having the enteral nutrition ready to be started as soon as they begin treatment. Another way to approach treating cachexia is by increasing calories if they're still taking things by mouth during treatment. You can do this, of course, by adding heavy cream or olive oil or using protein powders, anything that can get extra calories into their foods that they already are consuming. Another way would be to modify the texture and consistency of these foods to make it easier to swallow if they are experiencing significant pain associated with that, just so they can at least get something in by mouth. Once by mouth feeding diminishes, it's important to increase the enteral nutrition, so constant monitoring of these patients is important. It, some research shows that using formulas with branched chain amino acids and omega-3 fatty acids can increase the ability to absorb nutrients, and this is a recommended approach by the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. 
other recommended nutritional intervention approaches from the nutrition care manual for patients with head and neck cancer is to encourage small frequent energy dense meals instead of having them feel overwhelmed by trying to consume three large meals a day. It's important to make the meal times relaxing and not pressure them to eat if they are experiencing pain. Setting an eating schedule is important because if you wait until the patient is hungry, they might not want anything at all throughout that day because they might be just experiencing some nausea or some diarrhea associated with the treatment. So having food sent to the patient's room or having them set a schedule at home on when to eat is a great option to make sure that they get something in throughout the day. Liberalizing their diet restrictions if it's medically feasible is very important because if you limit what they have, they might not see anything on a menu or at home that they would want to eat. If you liberalize their restrictions and allow them to choose anything they want, then they're more likely to eat it because they like what they're choosing. It's important to encourage snacks and meals that are easy to prepare once they are at home during after treatment because they are going to be extremely fatigued from the treatment and not necessarily wanting to go prepare a meal when they are feeling that way. Nutritional supplements besides the enteral nutrition is important and of course you can encourage them to have to drink Ensure or Boost, very high protein or Glucerna depending on if they have problem controlling their blood glucose. Any of these are appropriate choices and it's typically recommended to try to get them to consume at least one to three times a day. Thank you for listening to our lectures on head and neck cancer. Please take the time to review the case study and attempt the questions that we have provided. There are two toolboxes that we have prepared for you. One is based off the assessment and the other is based off the intervention. We hope that you find these tools useful and will help prepare you for the quiz. Thank you and have a good day.